Colleen Roberts, uh, candidate for Jackson County Commissioner, so you can be talking to her and, and such. I mean, she'll be uh, uh, in position after I'm out, so You'll six be months. In position sick the dog songs. <laughs> no. yeah, see, that's one. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's uh, switch subjects. Questions, statements. This is uh, anyone who's attended, and we have a few, a couple that have. It's a, this is your, your meeting, so it's your chance to ask questions, etc. So, okay. and my name is Monica Wake, and I was elected to the library, the new library district board, and so. And I'm here for that reason, to hear there any questions, and also because I've been out of town for a week, just got back in today, and did see in your, in the notice in the paper that you specifically mentioned at some of the meetings, people were having questions about library districts, other special districts, so um, happy to be elected, and happy to be here, if I can answer any questions. So I suggest to hear your questions. I suggested to Mo, uh -huh. she was in my office on Friday morning, uh -huh. and I suggested that it would be good for you folks to do the same sort of thing that I've done. Uh -huh. Just go out, because it's difficult for people yes. to get into your meetings at the library or whatever libraries, unless right. you're going to, but to have, you can do it as individual board members, to go out and hold town halls about the libraries and what's happening and such in different areas around the county. Yes, and I brought the, I mean, not exactly in the town hall terms, but um, that... I want to go to each library and hold meetings, whatever, whatever type they will be. So um, we may look at whether it's feasible or not to hold two or three of our official board meetings a year at different libraries to rotate and, you know, after some years be able to um, hold them in any library or community that has meeting room space. Um, if that's not feasible, then we'll do that in addition to our regular monthly meetings. Monica, can you give us an update on the 60 cent or less um, taxes? When, what's the timing on when that's going to be determined? Um, so at our... Sorry, Don. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> You're off the hot seat. Um, literally, it's hot in here. Yeah, they it? turned off the air seat. He said they had to turn off the air conditioner. So, that's, a, yeah. hmm, that's all right. It's still it's probably hotter, right? Cooler than no okay. one <laughs> um, So the timing is that our first board meeting, which from which I have just seen draft minutes, we haven't finalized the minutes yet. Um, but during that meeting, we um, passed and adopted an extension to the July 1st deadline for the property tax because two reasons: we needed time to finalize an agreement with the county taking and you from a new district um, we need to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the county that has been operating that service so we needed to um, hire an attorney to help us with that contract it's part of doing business getting up and going doing business um, we also need some time to look at what it costs to run now, what it costs to try to cover the additional half a million dollar plus in services that the other libraries, the other communities have been contributing. So, you know, when, the, when library services and hours were cut in 2007, um, some of, the, when libraries started reopening after that, some of the communities funded additional services, additional open hours in some cases. In other cases, they maybe just were able to fund summer reading programs, bring in experts, something like that. So the combination of communities like Ashland, who paid a different difference in property tax, or was talent for the ut a fee. utility bill, had, they had an extra fee to cover additional services that the county commissioners couldn't afford to fund. So those additional services, whether they're additional hours or um, something identifiable like, like a contract with a store hotel, those additional services add up to a little more than a half a million a year. And that, that was part of the campaign, really, was um, to secure 
we wanted to secure stable long-term funding to keep the libraries open and to be able to hopefully offer more services and be able to replace what uh, what the cities and the friends have been trying to raise and cover. So, so we have to consider the current costs covering the. We'd love to be able to cover the costs that the communities have been pitching in now. For some, some of them are having a very hard time covering those costs. Um, we also need to look at covering essentially 17 months instead of one year through property taxes for the first year because we have zero <laughs> in the bank account. We can't get any money until we start collecting the property taxes mid-November. And so the county's essentially floating us until then, and of course we will enter into a contract to pay them back. Um, anyway, so the additional ser current cost additional services, 17 months plus, since we have a zero bank account, and we have many facilities in the county, we need to look at starting to put some money away to pay for um, basic facility future capital costs. So anything beyond a small repair or maintenance is a capital cost and zero in the bank account um, is going to start meaning something. You know, some of these buildings are already getting towards 10 years old. So you mentioned a um, float. Are, pardon? You mentioned a float from the county um, to get it started. Um, well, is it's there essentially since July 1, um, we, we will be What's the amount? The What's the amount of the float, and is there interest on that float? No, no interest no, in this. The the uh, the budget committee in the uh, when we approved the fourteen fifteen budget, uh, the, the, there was money put in the budget to run the libraries for a full year if we had to, and extension service. We knew that both of those were on the ballot, obviously. Our hope was is that at the, at the current level, at the current level, at the current that, level, at the cur was, where we were at in 13, 14, yeah. at the current level, uh, and uh, with a proviso that if in fact the the library or the extension service failed, then the budget committee would get back together and decide what we were going to do. A year ago on the 13, 14 budget uh, meetings, as you, I'm sure you're well aware of, Kevin. The decision was made that if we couldn't get something from outside funding, either through special district or some other uh, pennies from heaven, that uh, we would shut down the, the satellite libraries and leaving only the Medford and National libraries open for another year and then go from there. That was amended because one budget committee uh, can't, they can't uh, bind. Uh, bind the following budget committee. So that was a recommendation. So this year, 1415, like I just got through saying, okay, let's put it in because we knew that even if it passed, and, and we were hoping it would, that uh, they would have, as we stated, zero money, zero infrastructure, personnel to, to do things. And we have a contract with LSSI, who is our contractor uh, right now, a private entity who runs our libraries. And so we would fund those dollars up to when this passed, and then seek, the library district could do a couple things. Number one, they may have had somebody come up and say, hey, I'll fund it for you. You're out of here, county. Okay, no problem with that. Or more than likely, that if it passed, they would do, be in exactly the position they're in now. We've had no benefactors. <laughs> yeah, done. well, yeah, so, but, but, but uh, I don't use that as an example, but so mm -hmm. that's what we're doing. Now with, but that the library district will repay those costs to the taxpayers of Jackson County once they're back up, once they've collected and they're on their feet. So that's what we're in negotiations with right now. Fairly stated? Um, yes, although I'd say it's not really negotiations. I don't think there's any dispute. No, no, there isn't, but I mean, before, no, there's no contracts been officially signed yet. Yeah. You mentioned no interest, Don. No interest. What is the amount? then that's going to be floated. Well, it, the libraries, okay, that's pretty easy to figure out, Kevin. Our libraries runs us, runs up right about $6 million a year to operate, current level. 
Okay. Yeah, this is about five point three well, general fund. Yeah, dollars. general fund. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying I'm just saying that's how much it costs. Okay. Yeah. So so split that up whether you do it in quarters or whatever the case may be. So figure it out. So at, at a half a year, say that they get start collecting money and they have money in January. Okay, they'd be three million dollars in the hole. But as was stated earlier, one of the, our concerns is is they do have some reserve set up because things happen. And you know, if push came to shove, well, I can't commit the gun. I won't. We're not going to let libraries go to you know pieces. So, but my point being is, is we want the libraries to succeed. They passed. We're going to do everything we can to possibly make it happen. Okay, that sounds great. But the three thousand dollar float, as you mentioned, million. I'm sorry, three 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 million dollar float. That would be for a half a year. For half a year, you're you're behind the eight ball. You need to catch up from day one. That amount. So. Talking about reserve amounts is way down the future before that float is paid back and current operating costs are met. Mm -hmm. So you've got a long Probably. way to go before you before you're actually in positive cash flow to to even consider a reserve. And and we are drafting budget scenarios now to look at. And so to go back to your original question, the extension allowed us gets us to August fifteenth. Um, however, um, the city of Ashland, it's my understanding, has a July 25th deadline for levying their tax, uh, levying their property tax, um, and so we, we will look at it and consider in our Thursday meeting, see if we can make that or not. We also have scheduled monthly, regular monthly meetings, the first Thursday of the month. All right, Thursday, I think it's yeah, at 9. Thursday, yeah, of the month. So August, I think it's August yeah. 6th, something like that. So, the, so that, the, that's open meeting, just they're a, govern, they're a government agency now. So yeah. they're subject to every one of the open meeting laws and et cetera that, that any governmental <coughs> agency has. Good. We want to hear from people, we, yeah. So the sixty cents. We want to know your questions. We want input. Have a question. Yeah. Sixty cents up to sixty cents. I don't see anything less than sixty cents coming out. Based on what I've heard so far, you're going to have to put the pedal to the metal, right, in terms of property tax revenues in order to pay back the float to the county. Correct. Well, well this will be something. Not just the float to the county. The float, the float to the county. The additional half a million that we really want to cover for the communities who's Friends have been working so Three and hard. a half million. Uh, you said half million, so three and a half million then you're, you're starting off with. She's yeah. talking about the, the money yeah. that it would take to cover the monies that Ashland Talent, Friends of Roos, Friends of, Friends of Applegate are fronting now for those additional hours. It works out to be about a half a million, just a touch over half a million dollars yeah. a year. Rogue River too, right? At Rogue River too, right. And Eagle Point. Right. Yeah, yeah a, lot of, a lot of the friends. Small are. amounts. But if they're not doing other things that they'd like to do for the others, yes. So their meeting is, I think, at 9, isn't it? On um, August On 6th. Thursday. Oh, this Thursday. Thursday. This, uh, can I check Okay. Why don't you check? <laughs> I've been See, gone for The reason I bring that up is it's a public meeting, so questions yes. like that. Uh, we, I think we're actually good, so. having a study session first, followed by a board meetings. That was right. how it was when I left. We can go things are developing, so we just check. Do you have a question? At 60 cents a thousand, what, what kind of figure is that? That's so not. if you had a $100,000 home? Well, no, no, it's about a, a little, over, little over $8 million a year. $8 million. Mm -hmm. And they're current. That's budget. based on today's assessed value. Now, we expect that. I mean, let's face it, we're all taxpayers, our taxes have all gone up. And so that's good news for government, not good news for taxpayers. But that's that's the way it is. At eight million, the current level that they're running at is cost of five or six. Let me say too that the, the libraries have About still are dollars. still not back to the level that they were. That's a current closure. Right. They're, right. They're still the not back to the limited schedule they're on is already cost of six. They're still not back to the pre-2007 level of open hours. And the libraries are really busy. We hear all the time that um, we need more open hours. 
Now, we're at some disagreement. I think there's three options on the, the, the board will be discussing. Their board, not us. We're, we're out of, uh, uh, for levy options, and I don't want to go where they're at, but, but we've made a proposal to them that we think that, uh, that they could assess X amount of dollars and still have enough money to cover and to get the, to Ashland, uh, especially Ashland. Ashland's been extremely beneficial to the library. I mean, without Ashland, quite honestly, I don't know if this last ballot would have passed, but nevertheless, uh, for the, for, they're the only library in the county that's open for 40 hours. Correct? Correct. Their city council funds could have been additional. Well, yeah, the taxpayers right. of Ashland does. Right, and that was part of the campaign. Is that, and it's my understanding that um, the city said all along if the ballot measure passes, they're not going to continue that. I, I haven't seen anything like that, but it could be. All right, it's just what I read in the newspaper. <laughs> Do you have an idea as to what it would cost annually to run it at the 2007 operational levels? Does anybody know? Have a feel for that ballpark? Well, I, I don't want to be quoted. <laughs> we'll quote you. Um, but I seem to remember reading that it would be over nine million. Over okay. nine. Mm -hmm. so More than we eight that, that we could even. possibly raise them with the yeah. sixty cents. Yeah. Right. I don't know if that's true. Um, right. I'm looking forward to just seeing. Yes. Yeah. If I, they can get. I'm looking know. forward to seeing a number of different budget scenarios and what that would mean yeah. at different price points. You know. Right now, I think just looking to keep their head above water. I mean, just some yeah. breathing room, uh, so they can get you know get that they they've got a uh, which they had to by statute. They've got a uh, an attorney uh, on board. I think if you read the paper yesterday, I think it was Bartholomew. Uh, good attorney has been hired, so I'll uh, work to represent the library district. Okay. And at some time, we'll have to get a, uh, uh, well, not as long as they continue to contract with LSSI, but sometimes they have to get an executive director because that's the way statutes written. Right. But as long as you're contracting out with LSI, it's unnecessary. Right. So um, they do have for Thursday at 9 a.m. hold open for a library board meeting. So. So I thought, I thought it was at 9. I think it is officially at 9, yeah. Would you and mind? And we may have a study session first, and then... Would, would you mind if, if people contact you with questions? Oh, no. Would you, would you write your right name and contact number here? How, how you would be all right? Here's here. Yeah. I see yeah, you can write all over mine, you know. Nobody wants to talk to me, so let's <laughs> just uh, write it down somewhere here. Don. Speaking of lame duck commissioners, what? With all due respect, I, I wanted to ask you: Are, are, are there two things that um, really pop out in your mind in terms of what you didn't know when you first entered the office that you do know now? I didn't realize that uh, administrative government was as strong as it is. That was a surprise to me. How do you describe and how do you define? Well, I mean, so many things are done by or ORSs. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, or by, not by or the statutes, but by uh, 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 the uh, administrative rules. Filters its way all the way down. So That's a bit uh, overwhelming? Then. Pardon me? That was a bit overwhelming when you first realized? Not, not overwhelming, just surprising. Mm -hmm. Surprising. And so, and as such, it's much tougher to effect change because it's hard to change those administrative rules. And because you've got staff many cases are, are, are career people and good people. I'm not throwing them under the bus at all. Right. That's what they do every day and they're going to be here for 20 or 30 years. And that's just the way they do it. So to get them to change, and legislators, many of them will only serve a term or two at most and some longer, uh, it seems to me, this is my own observation, they write laws but fairly general and then they say, okay staff, you figure out the details. Mm -hmm. This is what we'd like to see you figure out how to get us there. Here's the law. Yeah, where does the will of the people come into that system? Yeah. That so anyway, described? that that's that's a concern, and I know you guys have brought that up, and I mm -hmm. and I I have sympathy with that. I understand that. I'm not really crazy about that, but that's you know that's the way it is. So, and there's no way to. Oh, I'm not saying there's any way ready for a long fight, and and it's mm -hmm. and, you know it can change, but again, it'll have to come legislatively. So top down. Uh, yeah. So that. That uh, uh, is, the, is that's the bad side. It's the con side that surprised me. 
The pro side is, after my almost four years now, three and a half, over three and a half years, is the quality of people that are involved in county government. I mean, through all phases, I'm talking about people who work on the roads and wherever they are, because as a private <coughs> sector person for 44 years, I mean, our standing joke being out of the construction business, if you saw six people standing around, it had to be a county work crew. You know, I found that's not true in, in almost all cases. We'll say every case, but in almost all cases. And, that, and that's been a pleasant surprise to me. So um, part of being a brand new district is that we're trying to get emails, et cetera, set up. And um, so uh, we wanted to get the domain JCLD for Jackson County Library District. Um, that's the, kind of the traditional way of naming library districts in Oregon and Washington. Um, but it turns out that that stands for Jefferson County Library District um, in Oregon. So we, can't, so we can't do that. So there are already JCLS for Jackson County Library Services. So at least for now, and this, and this was just on the phone tonight. <laughs> I think at 4 o'clock I was talking to the business manager. Um, we'll use this. She's not sure if the naming convention is going to be first name, first name, first letter, last name, or first initial and whole last name. So one of those. So meanwhile, though, Lisa Garcia is our business manager. She is the one that sends everything to the board. So. Um, Perfectly fine. <laughs> and she's very hers helpful. And, and she'll, she'll forward to us the same day. Okay. Thank you. Growing things. Okay. Well, he just called you a lame duck. I heard that. But. Yeah. <laughs>